Uh, good morning, everybody, and thanks very much, Mark, for the intro. And uh, it's a real honor for me to be here, and it's and putting this little uh, ten-minute talk together. Uh, I was asked to reflect on the history of thirty years and and come up with some things that uh, have been part of this relationship between our two companies. Or actually, you're going to see money more than two companies, but. Uh, so here it goes. And, uh, for me, the CNC CAD CAM thing and all that began way back uh, in the, as it says there, 70s and, and 80s. And the time when there was no CNC, it was NC. And before that, I mean, in the days of, uh, you can see there the paper, ta uh, paper cards, punch cards in the top. Then it was really big when it went to tape paper tape and then the like Moog Hydro Point there, I used to teach on that machine at RIT. And you actually entered in every line of code once at a time. And if you could see a close up of this and this is the console where you added in the information or every line, you would dial the dials and get the right numbers across and then lock them in, punch. Then go on to the next line. I'm mentioning all of that because that's where it all began. And before this, there was none. And so I started my, so in one guy's lifetime, we went from Bridgeport and Mills with no power, maybe a power feed, that was it. A big event was when they came out with a tracer machine where you would draw an accurate 10 to 1 drawing and then the electric guy would follow it and it would make that contour. So the ability to cut complicated parts or in, in one person's lifetime has been amazingly impacted and of course it was not easy. In the early days it was predicted that this was going to be the end of the tool maker. These computers on the machines or even the, the automated machines, it was it. We were done, might, might as well pack up your tools or else they were saying they're not that good. They're only going to be able to do stupid repetitious production work and still going to be a tool maker. But, or the, what my personal opinion, and what I used to teach my students that was, it is the future of the tool maker. It will take us to places that we never ever could have imagined and will create a new kind of individual that has not only the power to do incredibly more complex things, but incredibly more accurate and more reliable and more repeatable. And so, and of course that we all know has happened. As Mark mentioned, our relationship goes back to about the time when they were just coming up with a new part that was putting the computer on the machine, or CNC, computerized numerical control machines. And we had the great fortune of working with uh, this, uh, the same Dave Chevy that Mark mentioned before, and that's where we met. We were both doing applications and training <coughs> on the Dynapath control, which at that time was amazing. Because it not only could do lines and arcs, but it had a thing called can cycles. And you could put in a certain combination of code, and it would do a cylinder, or a ball, or a toroid, or any, a very, very amazing. And so now we get to go a little bit beyond just lines and arcs, and drilling, and into the carbon, or three-dimensional uh, machining. And then, that, when Mark and I would be in each other's territory, we would visit each other's house, and, or stay at each other's houses in that, and so I got to meet Mark's family, and his dad, is in the upper left there, he was a Gerber <laughs> guru. And if you're not, it's not the Gerber uh, children, uh, baby food, it's Gerber scientific. And at that time, Gerber was, had the early days of programmable machine tools, but it was way beyond job shops like we were. It was super high-end, you know, Fortune 500 kind of companies only. But they were, imagine being raised in a house where your father is a Gerber guru, your brother is a recent college grad who just, who did his thesis in computerized uh, uh, programming of machine tools. And so eventually we would end up in, and when I, that's how I remember Jack's bedroom, actually, is on the right there. And Jack would be just involved in the numbers part of it, and Mark and I had the tooling side of it. So we could 
say, well, why don't you try this? And how could you do that? And, and so we had great uh, memories of those kinds of times and sharing our ideas and that together. And then when Mark would visit our house, he would uh, enjoy occasionally a ride in my ultralight, or uh, uh, we also are crazy about bikes in our house, so we have lots of bikes and we see Mark riding on a couple of them. Yeah. And actually, this is where Harbeck began. Uh, it actually started in a couple of garages, but where it really became something was in a uh, town called Webster, New York, upstate uh, on Lake Ontario. And that barn that you see on the left there and the one up on the right, that's uh, really where uh, Harbeck got its, uh, and actually a number of businesses came out of that barn. And down below, you can see the uh, inside of that barn, the shop. And you can see our, where this is where we got our, our first CNC machine, which was a copy mill, of course, and, and where we began using the Apple uh, computer to do our programming for it. But you can't see it because it's behind the chip enclosure. Because in those days, they weren't any. And so if you had a sloppy job going, you used the shower curtain or a piece of, uh, of um, plastic to keep all the chips and the, and the coolant in one area as much as possible. Could. And the amazing thing about Mastercam that it gave a little tool room like ours or a shop like ours ability to do things that were mind-boggling. And keep in mind, this is in the 80s. So, I mean, there, the build like this is actually, I don't know if you've ever seen the inside of one of these, but it's a three and a half. And so, with a, there's a floppy disk up in the, in the museum up there. This was being invented while we were running on the floppy disks. And so, the, what's amazing is the detail work in here. And all of this absolute precision and thin wall and all of that was because we had programming systems that we could program that with. And then, surfaces. And surfaces was amazing, and so the ability. And this is a case of uh, Concept Two, a New England company that makes rowing um, equipment and machines. And they were forever until we had introduced them to this. They carved their ore molds, and so then they would they would cast them first, and then try to put a finish on. But every of their composite molds, everyone came out a little different. And every sets of ores were always a little different, and they had no control of that. And with lofted surfaces, we were able to figure out how to carve theirs out of a solid block of aluminum. And from then on, every, every ore was exactly the same. And they were so uh, into their capability that they bought a copy mill, and they bought Mastercam, and they bought the programs that we wrote, and everything else, so that they could do it all themselves. And even more complex, again, in this period of time, you can see the uh, ability to do some really incredible things a long, long time ago. And it was just too much of a good thing. And my brother and I were um, also having another business called CNC Systems. And Mike had, came together with his skills and background in machine tool rebuilding and, and servicing and building. And I added the toolmaker part to it. And so we started CNC Systems, which was to be a machine tool sales and service company, along with CAD CAM solutions, and all focused primarily on CNC, or computerized machine tools. It grew to become OptiPro. And now OptiPro is the absolute world leader in the highest end of optics manufacturing equipment producer, and also And this is what Harbeck grew up to become. So we're now, uh, I don't know, I think 50 or 60,000 square feet, about 140 people. Um, 40 some CNC spindles, I think 18 or 20 seats of Mastercam. So um, all this time it's been a very integral part of our, Mastercam has been a very integral part of what our company's all about. And that's, my take on the whole thing, and I'm going to try to show you what the Harbeck people say about We have roughly 36 CNC machines, several EDM machines, and Mastercam does run them all. Mastercam is uh, very trustworthy when it comes to producing the top quality parts you expect. 
Uh, my name is Peter Knapp. I'm, uh, I'm a mold maker here at Harbeck. We are a prototype production manufacturer that rapid prototypes and builds full production tooling. We noticed that there was a, an area in tool building that uh, was lacking and we decided to venture into a, a low cost, high quality production style tooling that our customers needed and were requesting and uh, we filled the void. Mastercam definitely being user friendly makes it a, a great tool to excel at the timelines and time frames we need to do these kind of tools. Harbeck is always attending trade shows. We're always going uh, researching things uh, through magazines, technical journals, things of that nature. And we look at what the other softwares are out there that are available. We look at the other CAM packages, but we always come back to Mastercam. The evaluations that we do on the other CAM packages um, sometimes provide some useful stuff, but the overall package can't be beat with Mastercam. So from everybody at Harbeck, Everybody at Mastercam, thanks for all you've done for us all these years. It's been a great ride and hopefully we have 30 more at least. <laughs>